morning, we have Hakim Hamdani, director at large in Netherlands. Hakim, would you like to introduce yourself a little bit? Uh, hello, Anna. Thank you very much for having me. I've been looking forward to this. Uh, my name is uh, Said Hakim Hamdani. I'm an IBNS member, director at large since the summer. Uh, working out of the Netherlands, but I'm Afghan originally. And I suppose that is why I'm here to talk to you today, Anas, right? Might be, might be also that you're partly Lithuanian. <laughs> yes. I could have been biased to choose you. <laughs> uh, so, Hakim, do you collect, you just collect Afghanistan? That's, yes, uh, it didn't always used to be like that, but uh, since a couple of years, I'm basically only focused on Afghanistan. Did you collect um, other bankers before? I did actually when I was a kid, when I got started, I collected pretty much everything but Afghanistan. Um, so I'd go to fairs and, you know, get the 50, 50 cent. Well, back then it was Fennig. I was living in Germany, 50 Fennig banknotes, you know, the stuff that you amass from all over the, the cheap and colorful notes. Um, later I became more serious about Afghanistan, but, uh, a few years ago, I also started collecting Brazil. Uh, but that was a subset, 19th, late 19th, early 20th century um, Brazilian notes and their forgery counterparts. Mm -hmm. And that eventually proved to be too expensive a venture. So I stopped with that and continued with what is my passion, and that is Afghanistan. The fact, well, I noticed myself that it's very difficult if you go too broadly in the first place. It's much better mm -hmm. to focus specifically. Yes. And, and where banknotes your first collectible, or you did other collectibles before? Because many people start with stamps and then they move to banknotes. Um, stamps was never a thing for me. I did collect the lids of coffee cream pots. I'm not sure if you're familiar, the little milk pots that you get with coffee, especially in continental Europe. And they tend to have little motives or colorful pictures on them. So I used to collect those. But that is way back when. That, um, that's interesting. I, I, it seems like... Collecting is is more a habit of, of people, you know, it seems like some people have just tendency to collect and once they start to collect one thing, they just move to another uh, collectible and it seems that some people just never collect. So mm -hmm. uh, so what are your collecting aims, Hakim, in general for, for Afghanistan, we could say now? Well, that is a good question. I've been trying to think about this in the days leading up to our talk. Um, I suppose that what I'm really aiming for is, is complete documentation. Um, I'm trying to find an example of, of each banknote that will illustrate a particular aspect of Afghan paper money. May that be uh, type, may that be date, may that be prefixes for subtypes, uh, may that be particular forms of specimens rarely seen elsewhere, um, may that be forgeries. Um, so I suppose I'm, I'm always looking for one to illustrate each particular characteristic. Um, I will only, my friends know this, I tend to only make statements when I have the notes to back it up. <laughs> Let's put it that way. It seems like a very, very ambitious goal even for just Afghanistan as one country. How early does Afghanistan paper currency go? I'm sorry, how early? How early, yes. When, when we, did it start? We, yeah, we start in 1919. To print, it was the first paper money issue in 1919. Yes. However, what is uh, what most people are unaware of is that this first paper money from the 1919-1920 issue was quite localized. It was only used in the outskirts of Kabul. It was a trial, if you like. Um, paper money nationwide only really took off about six, seven years later than that. Okay, that's that's uh, that's interesting. And how did people accept it? Well, that's an interesting question because people didn't accept it very well. There was always a bit of mistrust towards paper money. People were much more likely to look for coin, uh, especially in precious metal. Um, there was distrust towards paper money well into the 1930s still. And it's only after that, really, when it became clear that the government would back the value that uh, people started accepting it as a more commonplace uh, instrument of payment. I see. And then, so, so the first issue was in 1919, six years later, that's around 1925. Uh, mm -hmm. Was that a, a general issue for the country? Was it by central bank or, or any government authority? Well, that is, again, a very good question. The uh, history of our paper money issuance leading up until the mid-1930s is shrouded in a bit of mystery. So for the very early issues, 1919, 1920, but also 26 and 28, 
Um, we don't really know where they were printed. It's very likely that this happened in Kabul. Um, we do know the designers for some of the notes. Um, who actually, as a government entity, handled that? I would venture that it was the Treasury, as is commonly maintained also in catalogs. Um, there's, there's much that we don't know about that period, and it's becoming more and more difficult to research because all of the people that do know have passed or have been passing away. Okay, well, that's very unfortunate and, and sad to hear that it wasn't documented well, but uh, mm -hmm. um, it's very mysterious and I'm interested actually why it was just released. Uh, so so without any clear definitions, because you mentioned that it wasn't backed until 1940s around that clearly. So it's, I'm interested how did the, it went in the beginning. Were there any significant periods for the currency, let's say devaluations or, or mistrust? Uh, as, as I, I don't know if you know in Mauritius, late uh, 20th century issues, one of the central banks, I think it was Minister of Finance, he put his picture and his wife's picture in it. And, and local people just re rejected the currency straight away, didn't want to see it. Three, day, three days later, uh, the, the minister had to resign and somebody mm -hmm. else was put there. Was there anything similar in Afghanistan, any turmoil there? Um, I wouldn't call it quite as drastic as that, though we did have occasions. I'll, I'll give I'll give examples. Examples serve better to illustrate. Um, the 1936 issue, there are two series, the first and the second. The second, in my opinion, came about because uh, forgeries of the first started flooding the market. Um, later on, much later on in the 1990s, we had got devaluation. Um, when people literally had to cart around cubic meters of money in order wow. to buy anything. Um, when the currency was reformed in 2001, 100 trillion Afghani was declared worthless. And the rest that still remained was then exchanged for new currency. So um, I suppose losing trust in the currency, probably yes, especially that occasion in the 1930s because people were not that confident yet in, in placing the trust in paper instead of precious metal. Uh, as far as devaluation goes, people didn't really have a choice towards, uh, towards the end of the Civil War. Um, they had no choice but to cart around those cubic meters of money to get anything done, whether they trusted it or not. But uh, at that point, there were probably eight different entities issuing paper money in Afghanistan. So. Um, Again, a turbulent period. Much research remains to be done. I see. And um, out of those nine authorities, were they, out of nine issues, were they all authorities or private issues backed by private companies? Um, they were both government and private entities. And but private. private is a bit of a broad term here because you'll have to think of warlords deciding that in their territory they print the banknotes somewhat differently and it'll be used as circulating currency. I see. I see. Um, the best examples being the 10,000 Afghani notes, of which most people are aware there are two types, one with the letters joined, one with the letters not joined. And that mm -hmm. distinction is because one was central government, one was northern government. I see. I thought that is a very big uh, denomination for 10,000. And, you know, kind of big denominations always draw my attention because if you would, if you would think in the beginning when a currency is issued, you know, it, most of the time it's not... 10 million or 10 trillion on denominations. So it means that it had to be devalued three times. So I'm very interested in that. Mm -hmm. Also, I would make an assumption that once hyperinflation happened or the big inflation happened, there weren't any coins available freely because people would have went to coins because it's backed by, by the commodity, I would assume. Yes, I would suspect that whatever coins they had, they would have held on to, especially if there were older ones that were still in precious metals. I mean, we do have a thousand four hundred years of coin history, yes, uh, so uh, I figured that they weren't using them anymore for everyday transaction. It was just not feasible with exchange rates of seventy thousand Afghanis to one dollar. It's just not feasible. That's right. That's very much, uh, Hakim. Uh, I'm sure you have a presentation for us to to show any different types of of Afghanistan banknotes. I did prepare a few slides. Yes, it's a it's a small overview. Um, I. Uh, always like to try and show the variety that Afghanistan holds as a field of collecting. There are particular challenges associated 
with uh, collecting Afghanistan, both inside and outside of the country. At the same time, there's also many opportunities. So I've, uh, I've tried to keep it short. If it's okay with you, I'll just walk course, us through it. Of course. Uh, I would like to ask you one question beforehand. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned there are significant challenges. And one of the questions is, is it easier to find a local Afghanistan currency inside the country or outside the country? Ah. That's a good question. And actually, if you let me get to the slides, there is a slide that will address just that. Great. Looking forward to that. All right. If it's all good, then you and everyone else should be able to see a beautiful Afghan banknote now. Um, this is actually the first note that I ever received. It was a gift from my aunt uh, when I was seven years old, five Afghanis, 1926. I figured I'd start with this because everyone starts collecting somewhere. For me, it was this particular note. Um, I said there are challenges associated with collecting Afghanistan, and one of those is that there are collectors inside and outside of the country. And depending on where they are and what they're looking for, finding circulated versus uncirculated examples of notes may be more or less difficult. Um, a good example would be to say that in the West, finding high denomination early notes uncirculated is relatively straightforward if you have the patience and the money whereas finding circulated examples is very difficult. Uh, in Afghanistan, the opposite may hold true, but that's not always the case. Um, further, there are many difficult dates that you can find, and if you're only going for type complete collection, you may avoid these issues, but the moment you start looking at dates, you will notice that there are some notes like those pictured here that are extremely tricky to get. And this is not uh, even a matter of them being old. Um, the two examples on the bottom right are 50 Afghani 2008 and 1000 Afghani first signature 2004. Uh, finding those in any grade is tricky business. Um, the question that you asked about what people collect inside and outside of Afghanistan and how it's more or less difficult is probably best illustrated by the 1936 series. Um, on the right, you see the remainders that you come across in the West regularly, also in very good quality. On the left, however, you see the issued examples. And let me put it this way, finding those inside and outside of Afghanistan is very hard indeed, with the exception of the two and the five. So um, you have this particular situation, this particular dynamic when it comes to certain Afghan banknotes where Depending on what it is you're looking for, you may be in for a very long wait. I mean, me, for some notes, I've had to wait a decade and a half before I was able to track one down and, and uh, add it to my collection, as it were. Uh, that being said, there's many opportunities if you want to collect Afghanistan. Something that is extremely popular in Afghanistan, but also in Iran, is the collecting of consecutive pairs. And depending on how much effort you're willing to put in, you may find such consecutive pairs. And they cover the whole breadth. What you see at the top left is uh, 1925 Kabuli rupees. Uh, these are remainders. These are not issued notes. Um, then you go on to the 1939 five Afghani in green, and then the much later 1963 500 Afghani. Um, also in modern notes, of course, provided you can get that many from Afghanistan, from the modern issues, it's relatively easy to get consecutive pairs. Um, that being said, it is also becoming more difficult to find modern notes before 2008 in Afghanistan. There are reasons for that. Maybe I'll get back to that later on. Replacement notes are a popular topic. I'm aware that everyone is always asking in our chat groups and Facebook groups whether some prefix or other is a replacement note. And this is probably the most under-researched part of Afghan banknote history. Um, there are many numbering systems that are not fully documented yet. And accordingly, there are many replacement notes that uh, have yet to be identified. The real challenge is here finding enough material to work with. Um, and well, in the end, it comes down to having the patience of looking through sometimes thousands of notes in order to establish what the numbering system is and whether something is a real replacement or not. I know that a lot of people aren't interested in circulated currency as I am, and they much rather have either uncirculated notes or specimens. And well, as you can see from this little panel here, um, there are specimens to be had for practically all periods of Afghan paper money history. 
color trials, uh, different types of specimen by perforation, by stamping, by both. Um, a lot of variety here. In my research, um, I come across uh, curious things sometimes. And you were asking earlier, what is the aim here? And I said, the aim is to have one note to illustrate every characteristic. Um, and well, here we're looking at 100 Afghani 1979, first and second signature. But the reason there are six notes pictured here is because each of those illustrates a different subtype. So you have one with the wrong watermark, one without, one as a replacement, and then there are three that have the same signature but different numbering systems. Mm -hmm. um, it takes a lot of time to, to figure these things out, and I, I sure could do with some help. Maybe <laughs> I'll talk that they will get people interested. I mentioned forgeries. Forgeries exist across the whole range again. At the top left, you have the 1936 first and second series. Uh, bottom left is from the 1960s, and then on the right, the 500s and 1000s. These are modern from 2008 and beyond. Uh, this is a, a tricky part of collecting Afghanistan, um, because with a few exceptions, getting a hold of contemporary and modern forgeries is very, very hard. Afghans have a habit of not holding on to them. They'll pass it on to the next unsuspecting person. So I'm always running after my friends saying, please, 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 if you find one, keep it. I'll give you face value, yes. <laughs> yeah. Last but not least, once you get uh, more specialized, uh, you realize there's a lot to be found in terms of archival photographs, essays, etc., and proofs, uh, which is, of course, the domain of uh, quality auctions such as, uh, such as yours. Thank you, Hakim. I have a couple of questions. So, 1925, mm -hmm. the first one, five Kabili rupees. Suspecting from the name, uh, it seems that it was associated with other country. Am I correct in thinking that way? Uh, well, the rupee as a currency was, of course, very widespread. The Kabuli rupee was actually an Afghan invention, so to say, and it had an exchange rate to the Indian rupee. Okay. Um, it didn't last very long uh, after the uh, after the introduction of these notes in 1919-1920, because then in 26 the Afghani was used, at least on paper money. With the coins, the dates are slightly different. Um, we did very briefly revert back to the Kabuli rupee when there was an insurrection by a, uh, a thief from the north who made himself king. And he actually issued the, the pick 14, the one Kabuli rupee, 1929. Um, but that was very short-lived. He was, uh, he was uh, captured and executed, and we very swiftly reverted back to Afghani. I see, I see. And the printers, uh, so when, when was the first issue of Afghanistan banknotes printed in UK? Uh, those are the 1939. Before okay. that, the 1936 was still handled by Switzerland. I see. Uh, and I know, Hakim, you're writing a very great book on, on Afghanistan. Uh, would, you, would you mind taking us through that? So what, are, what is your goal in accomplishing it? When are you expecting to release it? Mm -hmm. So... Um, I'm, I'm very flattered that you call it a very great book, considering that you haven't seen it yet. <laughs> I'll yeah. await proper judgment when it's out. Um, I realize that there's a lot of information about Afghanistan in my head. And also, I have two friends, great collectors of Afghanistan, one in the country and one in uh, Northern America. Um, there's a lot of information that we've collected over the years. And if we don't put it down on paper, it's not much use to anyone else. Mm -hmm. So it, this has been a process, also one of deciding how to go about bringing out this information. And in the end, I'm now in a position where I can start at least small, and that starting small for me is coming out with an identification guide. Uh, there's a lot of Afghan banknotes that people have never seen. Um, that's simply because they're not in the existing catalogs and because there are no pictures of them on the internet. Um, I would like to first enable people to be able to uniquely identify each Afghan banknote, type, subtype, date, etc. That will be that will be the start. So a small, short guide to uh, identifying Afghan paper money. But of course, as you've seen from my little presentation, there's a lot of information behind it. And there's the social cultural context as well as the historical context. So in the long run, the aim is to come out with a well bigger tome, if you like, that really gives a lot more detail that will also then cover things like specimens, proofs, 
um, errors, etc., the kind of thing that I would not include in a in a common identification guide. There are things in Afghan paper money that you very rarely come across, and including those in a guide that people will hopefully use to go around banknote fairs or or try and track something down in Kabul for the adventurers. Um, it's not much use. I want to split this up. You know, I want to make it a, a useful little guide to start with and then move on to the bigger project later on. The, the target is to come out in spring. So if all goes well, then the first edition will be published next spring. I'm very sure that you will publish many tomes and editions, uh, you know, volumes on that. But uh, I'm very confident in saying that it will be a great book because from knowing you just a couple of years now, it seems like you're only moving when you have very solid steps. So I'm sure it will be a great book. And I'm sure that the reason that you're uh, waiting for it to be published and you know you're taking so much time is just because it will be a great book and i have great confidence in that thank you it's very kind of you and we'll we'll be very happy to use it as reference as we we don't have many references i'm not sure even if there are any afghanistan books as we're not using any of afghanistan reference books at the moment as far as i'm mm -hmm. aware as far as banknotes go, I've made this recommendation in the past, also in a recent review in the IBNS journal. Anyone who currently wishes to identify Afghan banknotes would do well to make recourse to Owen's publication, the banknote book. I see. It's a great book, yes, and he's updating it all the time. We're actually using it. And even in Lithuania, I noticed that um, there was quite a substantial section written and a lot of good information. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. It's great to have an interview with you, Hakim, and thank you for dedicating your time. I, I know you're really busy and you're lecturing uh, at the moment now. So uh, thank you for all that. And it was great to have you, Hakim. Thank you for having me, Arnas. It was a great pleasure. Keep up those auctions. I always do check for Afghanistan items. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Take care, Hakim. I'll speak to you soon. And I hope to meet you soon again. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.